Hey there guys, Massive <laughs> Dynamic here uh, with a quick train signaling tutorial. Uh, this is for bi-directional trains. These are the trains that most people start off their base with. Uh, if you're new to trains, this is probably what you're doing. So I have two stations on this end that I call East 1 and East 3. Uh, that would represent our base. Then I have one in the north, which we'll call North 1, which might represent a mining outpost. And uh, then I have two more called West 1 and West 3, which uh, could be maybe uh, other mining outposts. So typically, uh, trains, when we start out, um, would go from our mining outpost to back to our base. And that would be a bi-directional train on a single track. So let's represent that here. And we'll send this one train from East 1 to West 3. And let's just change this weak condition to inactivity. And we'll get rid of the time passed there. And we'll do inactivity here and get rid of the time passed there. That way it'll go quicker back and forth. Okay, so here it goes. So that, here it is coming back with its load of ore. And then it'll go back out to the mine and grab another load of ore. Okay, and everything is all well and good when we have one train on the track. But, let's say we decide, okay, that's great. Let's add another train to the same track. So we add one that goes from north one to west one so it wants to use the same station with a different uh, mining outpost uh, this one would go from this mining outpost over to this station so it would be on a different uh, a totally different schedule but it would share this same section of track right here this section right here so if we don't signal that let's see what happens let's go ahead and turn that on We'll send it out there to North 1. And we'll see how long it takes before we have a complete disaster on our hands. Without signaling the track. Okay, that was fine. Okay, we're still good. So we might go along a little bit and think, oh, I've got this figured out. I don't need signals. Who needs signals? So then we might get a little full of ourselves and say, okay, well, if that works, then this should work. I'll add a third train to the track. So then you send another one out there with a similar schedule. This one goes from West 1 to East 3. And let's see what happens. Now we know there's going to be a conflict because now we have, uh oh two trains sharing the same station. That is not going to work. All right, so then you think, uh oh, now I've ruined it. My trains have crashed. My bots aren't fast enough to fix it. What do I do now? All right, so we'll get in this train. We'll turn it to manual and we'll get it out of the way. We'll go park it over here in this undesignated parking space. And we'll leave it on manual mode for a minute while we figure this out. So signaling confuses a lot of people. Here is a very simple rule that you can use to signal your tracks so that you can have, you can launch a rocket without trains, certainly. You can lock, launch a rocket with uh, bi-directional trains, certainly. Uh, it, it is not a prerequisite for playing the game to even learn how to use trains, but I think most of us will agree that trains are just fun. That's why we do it. Okay, so here's what we do. Now we know that we wanna share this section of track right here this straight away all the trains are sharing that section of track so what we're going to do is we're going to use a chain signal here to stop that train from leaving there he won't move this train wants to come back this way we'll use a chain signal here to stop that train now all the trains have stopped no more collisions oh no he'll go sorry he'll go because he has a clear way out but he won't go back because he has no path. Why does he have no path? Because we only have a signal 
on one side of the track. So what we're going to do, actually, we're going to move that signal to here and then remove that one. We're going to add a signal here. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, that's on the wrong side of the track. We're going to add a signal. Oh, I didn't need to get rid of the track. Overclicked again. Okay, we're going to add a signal. Um, we're going to add a regular signal here because this one says yes, the train is allowed to travel in this direction to get to the station, and this is a dead end. So we'll use a regular signal there. Then we'll go back to a chain signal. And right now you'll see that it's looking at the straightaway track, but if we hit R, now it's looking at the track that we're on. See that R switches the direction or the track that the train is on. We want it on this one because we want it to look at this train that's coming out. And we want to stop it with the chain signal. So then we have the center track. And it need, uh, let's see, that train needs a destination. And since this is its destination here, we're going to use a rail signal, a regular signal, to say, yes, you can come this way. See how the yellow arrows show that the train can come in from that direction? And we're going to make that a regular signal, which says, yes, this is open and it's a dead end. There's no other signals to worry about up there. So now the train has advanced to there. Now we just need to let it know that the midway path is clear. So here we'll use all change signals. We'll put one here and one here before that intersection and one here and one here before that intersection. And now that train runs. These chain signals are these chain signals on this side are checking that this path of the train is clear. This it'll check this signal and then this signal and this signal which is red which means that there's no path for it this way. And now it's completely red because that train is blocking that path, but as soon as that train goes back, we'll see that this turns blue, meaning that it has a safe path, which would be from here to here to here to this green signal and to that station, and there it goes. Now all we have to do to clear this train, we need a regular signal here, once again, we'll hit R to make sure that we're looking at the right way. We want it to be to be the train that's incoming to the station. Signals are always put on the right side of the track in the train's forward motion. Okay, so we want to put a regular signal here, which tells the train that this is a clear path to a dead end station. So there's no other signal to worry about. This train is this path is clear all the way to the station, so we use a regular signal. Now this train won't run because it has a red light there because it has no path to its station, which is here. So we use a chain signal here to tell the train, here you go. This is a clear path to your station. I'm sorry, that's the wrong signal. We use a regular signal there to tell the train, yes, you can come this way, and your station is ahead of it. And then we'll give it a chain signal here to tell it that it can get back out. And then, check the chain schedule. Oh, yeah. It's going to West 3. That's where we sent it. And last and finally, we need to clear it because there's a train sitting here. We need to clear that signal for that station. So we'll need a signal here to clear this track. <clears throat> that lets it know that there's no train without that. See, that's all one block, and there's a train on that block. So we need to clear that block by giving it a chain signal. If there was a train here, that would be blocked also, and we would want to give it 
a chain signal also and we can see that our yellow box is going in the right direction so we give that a chain signal there we add a regular signal there to let the train know it can come in this way if it wants to regular signal here let's look at that again watch that box regular signal here that lets that know that it's clear all the way to this station now we have three trains on the same track a little bit of signaling we'll go ahead and turn this one back on and we'll see that the trains will run all the trains will move about and arrive at their destination safely without crashes okay they take turns now the reason that this isn't used in most mega bases is because it is not good for throughput because the trains have to wait for this entire middle section to clear before they can proceed through that middle section but it's fine for small bases and it's fun to play with um, to use bi-directional trains this way is kind of fun and it's a little bit of a challenge so I encourage you to keep trying just remember that when you hold the signal in your hand it will show you the blocks the, see this yellow block and then there's this pink block and the yellow block and these blue blocks here it shows you those blocks now each block can only contain one ch one train at any given time and chain signals this chain signal <clears throat> will look at all the signals in front of it until it gets to a regular signal and in front of it means on the right side on the same side of the track in the direction of the trains travel so this one actually all three of these chain signals here are looking all the way down the track to see that this one is green or blue and that this one is green or blue and then that this final destination is green and a regular regular signal will either be green yellow or red as long as it's uh, green <clears throat> as long as the there is at least one green signal down the way this chain signal will show blue to say yes it's there is a green signal down there that you can travel safely but when that one turns red it will stop the train there and th that will keep this entire middle section clear and you won't have any jams or accidents so there you have it guys I hope that helps we'll talk to you later